So the second S, for the folks who are catching up, is sustenance. Obviously, we need a way to pay for our food, but we also need people to be generous and kind to bring us some sort of food. And I usually encourage that food for a person like me or a person who's a traveler like me or a person who's living in agency like me to be canned goods. Pronounce that again, canned, as in metal, and clearly put together, goods. And the reason is because during a time of COVID, COVID and epidemic, pandemic and illness and flu season, that a can can be used for a lot of things. But more importantly, the food in the can was canned some time ago. It also has a life cycle that can last. So if you bring me a handful of cans, it is heavy for me, so I'd rather you only bring me a day's worth of cans, which is maybe six or seven cans, and three of those need to be canned tea or canned lemonade so that my body gets the water and nourishment it needs to be replenished in its cells because, as you know, 90% of our body is water, allegedly, according to the scientific channels, right, on PBS shows. But the reality is, and I'm not being silly, I'm being honest about technology and science, we also need a little bit of that electrolytes that's in the sugars in a sweet tea of can, right? That's why I said can. You see, it's, when I say can tea, it automatically brings me sweet tea. But then a mom will go, well, here's a bottle and look at all the flavors. And I'm like, no, I said can tea and that means I'll get a sweet tea. You see, I'm efficient and effective in my language, but you are abusive in choosing for me. Sorry, I apologize to say it that way, but God sort of feels that way, that you're not listening to the details. But then there's a can of protein. You see, about all the things that you can bring us in cans, I don't need a can of pumpkin stuffing. I don't need a can of vegetable soup that will eat my intestines because I don't have a way to heat it, usually. I can't heat food every single minute of the day because I have no kitchen, you see. But a can of chicken noodle soup is passable because it's already cooked and that chicken broth helps to heal me which is an old wives' tale, it's also an old Wiccan tale, and it's certainly an old American tale. And openly, if you're an American citizen, you know this. But honestly, canned protein is that can of chicken. That can of protein is a really good can of pork. A can of protein is a super can of beef. And honestly, I've tested some things. A can of roast beef gives you virtually nothing in it less than a, can, a little ounce, a seven ounce can of chicken. So please be careful of the big cans that look like there's lots of stuff in it. Make sure you test it for yourself and your family and just catch it out. Sometimes a can of crab can be okay, but cans of tuna and cans of salmon will blow right through someone who's living in homelessness and doesn't have the balance of the diet. So the other option are packets from Starkist, good old Charlie, of chicken salad or some sort of chicken as opposed to the tuna. You have to really look on the shelves because not everybody cares their, carries their marvelous chicken, partially because of the value for the dollar for it. But you can also run over to one of my favorite stores called the Dollar General and buy their Clover brand, I think it's Clover brand, chicken salad, they're marvelous. And they're cans of chicken and dumplings, which are significant. So if you're trying to take care of someone who's homeless and help them to eat well enough for their mind to function, their body to work, please do canned proteins. Your second addition to that might be a can of fruit. Please no, uh, what do they call it, mixed fruit. Nobody needs those grapes going through them like that. Nobody needs cherries right now. We need cans of mandarin oranges, cans of pineapple, very low syrup, cans of peaches and pears, probably more pears than peaches just because of what those sugars can be hard to digest. 